John Samuel, Michael Giddens, War Report, Auburn. Uh, you, going into your senior season here, you guys have probably heard a lot of the chatter about Auburn's schedule and how you're expected to finish. Um, we've been told a lot about the change in team culture, and, and Har Coach Harson talked about uh, you and some others who have stepped up as leaders this offseason. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys have changed team culture and how it's going to help you this season? Well, I think that's also a testament to Coach Harson and some of the things that we went through starting in January, coming from the season that we had last year. And all the guys are coming back and knowing where Auburn needs to be and where we were. And I think guys are realizing that with Derek Hall and Tank as well, that we belong at the top and that's that's what our push is. And, you know, people can say what they want, but they're not in the locker room. They're not at practice every day. Um, and we believe that what we are doing in the off season is creating momentum and positivity and what we're ready to do this fall. Left side, back row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. We, we got to talk every week during a football season this past year. Fun to do this face-to-face. Uh, -face. Congratulations on being selected as one of the representatives for Auburn uh, to Media Days, John Samuel. Um, so among the changes from last year to this year is the absence of Mike Bobo. You've got a, an offense that's now going to be uh, Eric Keesaw and Brian Harson directing things. Uh, we asked Tank earlier what could be different about the offense, and he suggested that you're going to see an added emphasis in the run game. Uh, just what can you add to that? What, what should folks expect uh, from the Auburn offense in 2022 uh, with, with the new offense coordinator? Well, I think it's a little bit easier this year with Eric Kiesaw because they're on the same page, right? They put, they've been together for a while. Now they see that. And now we get to be a part of that. And there's not as many miscommunications um, throughout our days and practices and games as there are with Mike Bobo, that you know, that's kind of an alpha guy, right? Like that's that's a, heck, a former head coach. And sometimes that can be an issue. Um, but I think with Eric Keesaw, it brings a whole different dimension of communication and allowing us to all be on the same page and pushing towards um, the same goal. And to be on that same page is really um, is beneficial for our offense. And like Tank said, added run emphasis as well. But also I think it creates better communication with wide receivers and tight ends as quarterbacks and as we grow the passing game as well um, in this coming season. We'll go to the fourth, uh, fourth row on the left. Hey, John Samuel, Rex Castillo out of WRBL in Columbus. Um, TJ Finley coming back, but a lot of talent's coming back to the quarterback room as well. Uh, with Eric Esau taking over, have you seen a lot of growth? I mean, Zach Calzada brings in a lot of talent as well, and with TJ Finley as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, 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 it's a testament to those guys. They work so hard, and they're always in the, in the rooms and talking with the coaches and just trying to better themselves, and especially during this QB battle, right? And we'll see that as fall camp starts, as – is how all the hard work in the all season has paid off, and we'll see that battle as it commences, and we'll see what happens as as we push through um, into into the season. Right side, third row. John Samuel, Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. With all the things that happened in the off season to Coach Harson's family, to the Auburn football family, uh, how much did that kind of uh, anger the players? How much did it unite them and bond them to to want to go out and play hard for Coach Harson this year? It brought us a lot closer. Uh, I think when you fight for something that you really want and you get it, that just that brings you a lot closer. It gives you confidence. Knowing what you want was able to happen and bring a coach that we believe in, in Coach Harson, back to Auburn um, where he belongs is so, so cr crucial for this team, um, especially in year two. And you see, normally you see a lot of change in year two uh, with programs because they buy into the culture. And I think that was a huge buy-in for our team into the culture whenever he was able to come back. Left side, third row. Nick Brooks with WTVY. You know, all three of you guys, you, Derek, and, and Tank, have mentioned Coach Harson working out with you guys um, in the team. Just kind of talk about what that does for you guys as players to see your head coach alongside you running those stadiums or doing, doing any other workouts. Well, when he gets on you now, you can't really say, like, you're not working out or anything. You don't know how it feels because he's right there with you. So, and it also pushes you because if he beats you, it's, it's not a good day for you because he's going to make you do extra. So... Um, but that's been really awesome, you know, have a coach like that interacts as well as he does with players. And that's just a testament to who he is as a man as well. Um, he's not just a coach. He's, he's a leader on our team, and he loves to interact with us and, and have fun with us, but also lift with us and push us. And I think that's really unique. Right side, front row. Anthony Patterson with Deal on the Voice. What would you say that there is the difference between Harson versus um, my son when he was there? Um, how you grown? How much you've grown under Harson? Well, I think it's it's two totally different coaches, right? So you have Malzahn, who 
he was a great coach, but he's more of a player's coach, right? He, he would do anything for his players, but to an extent that it might not be beneficial for us. Um, and Harson is stuck in his way because he was really successful where he was before in the things that he was doing. And so when, he's, when you have that and you allow guys to buy into that, that creates a very special thing because you have everybody bought into something that works. And when that happens, anything is really possible. Left side, front row. Hey, John, good morning. Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV in Baton Rouge. Um, you scored a big win at LSU last year on the road. Um, they're coming to your place this year. Just want your thoughts on that game. And what makes a, a game at Jordan Hare special? It's a small town, quiet most of the year, and then there's 90,000 people there for your home games. Well, I think that's part of it, right? It's Auburn. It's, there's not much there, but everyone there loves Auburn football and loves Auburn for who they are. And I think that's, you know, you've had guys that come up here and speak and, talk about how loud it is at Auburn. Well, we, we think it's the best in the country, and obviously we have a little bias, but we think that's, that's so true. And to have that um, with us every single game is crucial. And obviously we open up with five straight at home, and LSU being the last of those. Um, and that's always an unbelievable game. Obviously last year that was really awesome to get that and make that history because it's been so long since we had won um, in Death Valley. Right here on the third row, and then we'll finish back here. Uh, Michael Giddens, War Report, Auburn again. Uh, in interviews you've done with us and others, you guys have talked about one of the biggest differences between Coach Malzahn and Coach Harson has been the strength and conditioning program. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the progress you guys have made in the weight room in year two uh, with Jeff Pittman and how that's going to translate to success on the field? Oh, 100%. Uh, Coach Pittman and his staff, he does a brilliant job of creating a staff that that really allows his players to develop in ways that they need to develop. Not, it's not a cookie cutter concept, right? So um, being able to do that, and all of us, if you come out now and if you looked at a picture two years ago, our guys are so much bigger, faster, stronger. Um, and that's just a testament to what they do. Um, obviously at Boise, he did that as well. And so to have that, um, it's really awesome because it, it builds confidence, right? It's like even running the decks on Fridays builds confidence because you get through that and you feel like nothing can stop you. Uh, and that's the same way in the weight room. You're building body armor, right, for the season. Um, you're building speed, quickness, and all those things. And that will pay huge dividends, especially as you get to the back end of the season this year. Um, that can pay huge dividends for our health as well. Back row. John Samuel, you, you were asked about the quarterbacks earlier. The, the passing offense is, is going to be you know, something that's, that's scrutinized heavily uh, th this year for Auburn. What can you tell us about the wide receivers and uh, the guys in the tight end room with you and, and who's made uh, some progress uh, this, this offseason and, and impressed you? Well, that was a huge emphasis right in the offseason. And we went out and we got guys like Cor Coy Moore. We got Worsham from Miami. And we already have Shedrick Jackson and uh, Malcolm Johnson. We have, I think we're so much, we have so much more depth now. And I think that's something we didn't have last year, whether it be injuries or whatnot. Um, so that's been a huge, huge um, plus for us this offseason is getting those guys in and allowing them to learn the playbook because that's, that's what we need. And that's, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was some, the only thing that we really needed, but that was something that really completes our offense. Um, and in the tight end room, we have so much experience. Um, we've played together for so long now, and to have one more year together as a whole group um, is something really special. And we take pride in, in our um, dominance on the field as a tight end room because um, we believe we are truly a special group. Um, in our, on our team. Final question, fourth row. John, uh, um, Nolan Smith yesterday for media days, he came in and he was asked, what is the hardest stadium in the ICC to play in? And he said Jordan Hare. How important is it, how special is it? Again, you said you have five straight start off the season, but it was also a losing streak against Georgia recently. How important is it to, to make that series go your way as well? Right, uh, like I said about the five games in a row, I mean, to have those at home in Jordan Hare, um, especially this year with the guys we have coming back, the experience and knowing what is, what is capable of us when we play at home is truly something that we do not take lightly. And to play in that stadium is such a blessing that you, whenever you have that opportunity, you got to take full advantage. And I feel like last year we didn't. And that was something that we have really emphasized this year is when we play at home, we win. And that's something that I think successful teams do. They win at home and they win on the road, but they most definitely do not lose at home. And that's something that we've taken. Obviously, the Georgia game, that's our first road game. So, I mean, whatever happens throughout the year, that game is always a special one. It's a big rivalry for us and for them. Um, so we'll be very, very excited. We always circle that one on our calendar, so. Medical Properties Trust, at the very heart of healthcare.